I'm gonna give my hydraulics a bit of a birthday today. If you look at them quick release fittings, they ain't gonna come undone in a million years. And the swage ends are starting to get a bit crusty. So I'm gonna replace the quick releases. So I'm gonna swap it over with my pot hauler. Obviously you see I haven't, been, I haven't swapped them over for about a year or two. So I'm gonna take all the fittings off and replace them with new. With all hydraulics, Basically, this is the feed. This is 3.8 type, and this is the return. That's half inch. You always have a bigger return than you do feed because you want to get the oil back quickly to the tank with no back pressure. So obviously, half inch compared to 3.8 is a lot different bore in it. That's probably about three times the volume what can go through the 3.8 compared to the half inch. So now I've got to try and get these done. Hopefully, these push fits are never going to come, or quick releases are never going to come apart again. So hopefully I can break them out the fit in there. Well, that quick release is never going to come undone, so I might as well just try and take the, unscrew the male part of the quick release. Well, I've got to replace that too, because that's obviously seized in there. Oh, that's cracked. Lovely, just what I want. That's half the battle one. Time for the half inch. That's a 27 mil spanner. Oh, that's gone too. Lovely job. This can make my life a lot easier. Happy days. Well, these are the two new quick releases, male and female, both parts. If you look at these, they've got parallel fittings. So obviously with parallel fittings, you always use doughty seals. Never use PTFE on parallel fittings. That's not needed at all. You only use PTFE on tapered fittings. Whereas everything on what I use on the boot is parallel. That's doughty seals all the way. I've got a few half inch doughty seals and a few 3.8 doughty seals. I'm just putting everything on a bit of plastic just to keep it clean because obviously there's a bit of sand and grit and crap in boots but hydraulics is really susceptible to ingress you need things most filters on hydraulics is about five micron I think a hair is 60 micron it's very small in it items 20 micron or bigger will damage hydraulics causing premature wear well that's the new 3.8 pipe sitting there if you look at the end fittings the threads parallel but if you look inside it's got a cone well that's for a slightly different type of fitting we ain't using cone fittings obviously because i'm using a parallel fitting here and that'll seal on that seat using a doughty washer obviously some fittings the male fitting you've got another cone and that bolt up tight to that and that's the actual cone face what call what create the seal Obviously they're really easy to fit, just get your doughty seal, make sure there's no fluff or grit on it, on the faces. Push it over the seal, and obviously that rubber will seal against that face and this face. So all you've got to do is then screw it up. And then just tighten it up with a spanner, and that end's done. All the fittings, the standard size is all common to stainless, standard size spanner. Well, obviously for 3.8, that's 22 mil. So obviously we've got a 22 mil spanner here. Unfortunately, I've only got one of them. So I've got to use a trusty adjustable, what I don't really like using, but that do the job. So all you have to do is just nip it. That's in, that'll, that'll then be fine. You ain't got to really crank out of them, just nip them. If you, all you need to do is compress the rubber in the seal. Well, it's not a huge amount of pressure. Well, I've now got the half inch pipe here. If you look at the end of this, I don't know how well you can see it. There's a little couple, couple of dinks where it's been dropped or damaged during the fitting process. But if I was using a cone fitting, I'd have to use a bit of emery and clean them off because it wouldn't seal if they've been dinked. But same as the other one, 
just a parallel fitting so that doesn't make no difference. So all I'll do is the same. Just need crap in there, shouldn't be. Put the dirty seal on and screw on the quick release. The standard size of all these half inch fittings is 27 mil. Obviously with the quick release that's a bit larger. That's a 30 mil spanner. So just do that. Give it a nip and that end's all done as well lovely new stuff is far better and corroded old crappy stuff but that's part and parcel of being in the marine environment that do rust mild steel as any plated you can get stainless steel fittings but they're so expensive they really really are they cost a fortune i was quoted for one of these half inch ends they're about 70 80 quid each for stainless well that i can't really warrant that I said in the hose is only about 20 quid a pop, you don't mind, that's three or four hoses for the price of one stainless fitting. I'll just crack this fitting off, that's nearly loose now. I'll just close the valve as much as I can so it, in theory, divert it through the motor so oil won't pour out of here. You always get a little bit. Got my crusty old oil rag just to wrap around it. If any oil do drip, I'll go on the crusty old rag instead of all over the deck. That's tied on. I've also got my new doughty seal and mail quick release fitting ready. Just unscrew this. Oh, that was a bit tight. Little fingers. See, didn't that much oil there. But I'll just pull that doughty seal off. And as you can see, it's a bit crusty around there, so I'll give that a wipe. I want that seal on face to be clean. I like the fitting's rusty, but the faces are still good, obviously, because they've got oil on them. But I normally give them a coat of wax oil every few weeks to try and keep them good but i have neglected it lately i've got to admit so now all i've got to do a bit tight shouldn't be all i've got to do is push my doughty seal on and screw on the fitting easy peasy And then get 22 mil spanner. And just nip it. All sorted. Lovely. Now this is the other end of the 3.8 hose. This is obviously the pressure side, the feed. This fitting will be a cone fitting. Because just a, it's just a male that will be a cone, cone fitting on here. Unlike the other end, this cone fitting is pretty good. It's got a couple little scratches on it, but that's good enough to seal. The other one had a few little dints and that would never sealed in a million years, but I don't have to worry if it's a parallel thread. Well, that'll just seal on that cone seat in here, this side. So just unbolt bolt it and get the hose out of the way and then bolt this on. I'll put the rag below it because oil will come out. I have to lift this as soon as I undo it. I'll lift it and get it out of the way sharpish because because I can't get the quick release fitting off. I can't drain the oil anywhere because see solid, but it's obviously been protected in the bow of the boat, so it's not rusty at all. So let's get this unbottled and get it off. Well, I've got that fitting off and out of the way. Just get another bit of clean cloth. And just wipe the threads just in case I've knocked any because obviously there's sand everywhere in that little boot. Just give the threads a clean so that's now nice and clean. I don't know if you can see the 
angle on the fitting. It's not easy to get to. Right, and I've got the other hose and I'll screw that on. That's the new fitting. You can see the taper on the fitting there. Just stick that on. I always lay out the hose in the right direction first, then you've got to wrestle the hose. And you can normally start it with two fingers like I'm doing here. Well, that probably didn't help because I've got the camera here. But I'll just start that and I'll soon nip that up. That's the pump side, so not too much oil should come out of it. You always get a little bit. And after you nip that with a spanner, you can take your rag out of the way. Let's collect the oil, the oil and just imagine the oil's all soaked into this rag. So just give it a wipe over the fit, wipe over the fitting. You're never going to stop corrosion. You can wipe a little bit of oil on it to start with. You're giving it more of a fighting chance, really, ain't you? So that's all wiped over an oldie rag. Excuse the pun, <laughs> but it's right in this case, isn't it? And now I just got to undo the half inch side. What's the return? Obviously, you always have a filter on your return. Hydraulics are always got a filter on the return. That's to protect the tank and protect the oil what's in it. So if you get any oil come back, because oil ain't gonna be uh, grit ain't gonna be generated in the tank, that's gonna be generated in an auxiliary. So when the oil come back through here, that's filtered first to try and keep grit out of your tank. So it's back with the 27 mil. Cool, that went. That's cracked nicely, and I've got my oily rag underneath it catch any oil that drop drip out on the floor or drip out on the side now that's off and away I can get another bit of clean kitchen roll give that a good wipe just to make sure there's no crap in the threads they all look pretty good to be honest I've always already laid the pipe in position so you only got to just lift it up and start screwing it on. Easy peasy. As before, once it's nipped up, get your rag whilst collecting the old oil and just give it a wipe over. Just give it a fighting chance. cost you nothing and that keep your fittings a lot better than what they would do if you didn't you need a rag to collect the oil anyway so you might as well use it as this end is totally seized in that fitting to unscrew that I've basically got to spin the whole pipe round so I'll put a, the oily rag underneath it so I've got to spin that until that come off that's why I released the other end first. So obviously you can't spin it when the other end's still attached. Obviously that end's all off now. That's still left a doughty seal on it. Doughty seal, so I'll just pull the doughty seal off. Get rid of that. Give that a wipe to get rid of any crap on the faces. Ooh. There's a little bit of PTFE on there. I must have put a little bit on just to prevent corrosion. You don't actually need PTFE on these, but sometimes I do put PTFE on them. So in case you get any salt in them, that doesn't ever seize totally solid, but they're not actually needed for to seal. So with that wiped down, just stick that don't you see it on? Screw up the fitting, get the trusty 27 mil out. That's nipped up. Should all now be good to go. Plus the fittings all back on and mounted. Just find the oiliest bit of my oily rag. And give them a quick wipe over. Just to 
protect them a bit. Do this one too. And that should be ready to go. What I will do, I'll come down here in the next day or two and give them a coat of wax oil because that protect it even better. But just for a few days, a little coat of oil won't do any harm. Well, as you can hear, I'll start up the hydraulic power back just to run all the pipes through, get them filled. Obviously, they'll have been full of air. Just run up for a couple of minutes and then I'll turn it off. When you run it for a couple of minutes, just take the lid off the hydraulic tank and check oil. The oil will be down probably maybe a litre or so. So just check that and fill it up. These small little power packs don't hold a lot of oil. And the biggest thing is getting hot. So the more oil you got, the more heat you can absorb before it heat up the whole circuit. Well, that's the new hoses and the quick releases replaced. These other fittings are starting to look a bit crusty. But on this net hauler, you've got to strip the whole thing down to be able to get in there to undo the end of the hoses was a bit of a pain in the bum. But I'll do that at a later date and I'll come back and I'll put a wire brush over the valve and clean out or clean everything up and give it a coat of wax oil. One good thing, a lot of these people use these expensive valves with a pressure relief on them. You don't need them. They're a couple hundred quid each. Instead, Use these four-way diverter valves. They're four-way, half-inch. It's got four fittings, all half-inch, and they work fine. And they cost about thirty-five quid. Because most, I know all the sea winch power packs have got a pressure relief valve on, so you don't need an expensive valve. These thirty-five quid valves uh, do the job. Instead of paying a couple hundred quid to go, the expect of something for thirty-five quid go rusty. And it is two or three hundred quid to go rusty. So you might as well just use the cheap valves. Well, cheers for watching. Now I can swap the net all over to the pot hauler quickly and simply. Or I should have really done and bought a combination hauler. But I find these nice wide, these nice wide belts with just a rubber balloon on top. They don't crush heron like anything else for a pinch roller. Because you, when you're getting heron, you get a large volume going through and fill it up. These are a lot better for hauling them. The ones that are pinch rollers crush a lot of fish and these don't. So I'll stick with this for heron fishing. That's a good little hauler really. Alright, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good day. Bye.